Are you ready? Then the bottom fell out, and that would, that would have been a normal growth rate, you know? But, all right, good to see you. Thank you. All right. I want to welcome everyone tonight to the Zephyr Hill City Council. Uh, it's Monday, March 25th. It is a little after 6, 6.06. Uh, may I please have the roll call? Yes, sir. Lance Smith. Here. Ken Burgess. Here. Mayor Monson. Here. Steve Spina. Here. Jody Wilkerson. Here. Charles Proctor. Here. Matthew Maggart. William Poe. Here. All right, thank you. And uh, if we could rise for the invocation that's going to be given by Stephen Ezra. Is, okay. Stephen, and then we'll follow up by the ple with the pledge. Thank you. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. God of us all, we pray that you would bless now those who gather in this place. Give the gifts of discernment where needed, the gifts of wisdom where needed, give the gifts of vision where needed. And to those who lead here, grant the patience of cooperation with one another. For those who debate here this evening, uh, grant them clarity of thought. And to those who make decisions, give them the courage of truth. We pray that you would bless the members of the city council and give them the gift of oversight that they might honor your will as they strive for our city. Guide them as they work towards the purpose of shaping the civic lives of our citizens and unite all of us uh, with all people of goodwill, both in this place and beyond, in order that Zephyr Hills might continue to be a place of hope and fulfillment. Amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Ezra. Thank you for that prayer. Um, can, can some, we turn the house lights on? All right, again, I want to welcome everyone to the council meeting tonight. Um, there are agenda items that we'll go over. If you want to speak to one, please speak at the time it's presented. If you want to speak on something else, please sign up with our clerk, Lori Hillman, right over here to my left, and uh, we'll get you on the agenda. Um, with that, uh, and also just make sure your phone's off, if you could, please. Um, with that, we'll go into the first to the mayor's items, actually. Yeah, we're going to have Chief come up and introduce our first item. Good evening. Derek Brewer, Police Chief, City of Zephyr Hills. I kind of just want to give an update in reference to um, consolidation of dispatch. Um, back in February of 21, um, we had a workshop. And some of the benefits that we discussed were um, greater situational awareness, armed with information to better serve the public, improved interoperability, more efficient, profound change to how emergency services interact with the public, improved officer safety, and removed redundancy. Some of those challenges we discussed were, it's complex, it's multidimensional, and it's time consuming. Obviously, we are here in March of 2024, and I am still giving you updates. But the good news is, is that um, we're getting closer. Uh, so my conclusion from the analysis that I presented back on uh, February 15, 2021, was that uh, full consolidation was the optimal alternative for future of the future of telecommunications at ZPD. And the following reasons were, uh, even though the initial cost of equipment and software will be costly, sharing future expenses will likely provide long-term savings. We've never uh, sold this as a savings measure, um, but I do believe that in, in the long term, with the update of equipment that would have been required for our system and sharing those expenses, it would be a benefit to us. Uh, the process is lengthy, time consuming, uh, but sharing standard technology equipment and protocols will improve emergency coordination. Full integration may be the best option to improve relations and enhance cooperation with partnering agencies. I think the fact that uh, Captain Ross joined me here today is a sign that uh, that cooperation has already begun and it's pretty strong. The advantages to the city, department, and community outweigh the loss of any uh, lost autonomy. So uh, after three years of discussions, planning, budgeting, et cetera, et cetera uh, we anticipate to go live um, the second week of May. 
However, that could be delayed. Uh, there are, that is tentative. Um, but based on discussions with the county, our report writing, our records management system, our CAD system, new CAD system, um, we're hoping to have that all ready and ready to go in second week of May. Um, <clears throat> so I asked Captain Ross to join me today um, to help answer any questions that you might have um, concerning the project um, from the county's perspective um, and what members of the community might expect uh, once we do go live. Right. Hi, Council. Um, to introduce uh, Justin Ross, Captain uh, with the Pasco County Sheriff's Office uh, over our uh, Operational Readiness Division. So just to, to start, um, you know, to kind of echo the chief give, and, and give a little bit of an update, and then um, I'll answer any questions that, that you, you guys may have. So the chief and his team have been an amazing partner throughout this process, and it is a long and lengthy process, and I think what complicated um, and may have extended uh, some of the time uh, was was not on the on the city side. It was actually on on the county and the sheriff's office side. So, uh, what was also happening during this time is the sheriff's office went out to search for a new report writing software. Uh, so, uh, our current vendor uh, is Central Square One Solution, um, and which we've switched to back in 2013 from the CAD, 2014 for RMS, um, and and on the RMS side. Full transparency, it's been a rocky relationship uh, with, with that vendor. Uh, on the CAD side, um, not, not as bad, right? I think with any technology, as you guys know, there's going to be uh, hurdles because it's technology, right? It doesn't, for whatever reason, it seems to break down uh, when you need it most. But um, from the CAD side, it, it was, was going well. On the RMS side, it wasn't. So um, we had made the decision that we were going to go look for a new records management uh, system. And, um, you know, it where we've, we've evaluated um, several different um, uh, platforms out there. We, we convened a panel uh, to go out and look at um, all of the different, our one um, requirement for uh, looking at a new system was that it be cloud-based because we know that that cloud infrastructure is gonna make it uh, the most agile for future growth and development. And that was the issue that we were working with with our current RMS vendor. So uh, we did put, we put together a panel, we went out, evaluated a lot of vendors. That was the one requirement that we had for them. Um, and uh, the other uh, aspect was we wanted to look in, and, and try to consolidate a lot of processes, right? Improving efficiency is gonna make us more effective as, as organizations. So we landed with Axon Records. Um, if, if you're familiar, I know uh, the city as well, uh, Taser is Axon, uh, if body-worn cameras, Axon, right? So a lot of the technology is there, um, and they also have the uh, report management system. So, um, the ability, uh, they have uh, records and standards, which is more of like that accountability or reporting um, aspect of, uh, of the paperwork. So, you know, if there's uh, an agency crash or a pursuit, uh, a use of force, right, all of that administrative documentation in addition to your incident reports and investigations. So those are the two pieces that Axon brings. And that allowed us to bring and consolidate all of everything digital in, in one place. Um, so your, your police reports and records are in one place, as so as your, your BWC and your digital evidence, uh, and then your only other left with is your physical evidence. So that's consolidating things and that's improving the relationship as well uh, with the state attorney's office and the ease of prosecution of cases. So uh, we're definitely excited to get there. It is a long process, as the chief said, because we wanna make sure that we get it right. One thing that I will say that we learned from a sheriff's office in our implementation with Central Square uh, is that uh, age old adage of you want to measure twice and cut once uh, and not rush to that. So, um, you know, we had some growing pains when we went live with, with Central Square. I actually ended up getting reassigned to IT for six months as a, a, uh, a troubleshoot help desk to help people through and liaison with Central Square and try to build and fix things that were missed during the go live. So uh, we are for the better having experienced that. Um, and are working through to make sure uh, that this transition is a lot smoother. So there's been a lot there. Um, the, as far as the go lives go, right, the chief and, and, and the, the PD, they've been on it. Uh, and so they're ready to go live and we're, we're still, we're gonna be probably uh, September, October 
uh, before we actually implement Axon Records. But that, uh, obviously, we're not letting hold up, uh, hold up the overall uh, migration. So where we're at is, um, as, as it stands from the city perspective, you guys are done and ready. It's, it's really waiting on, on the county. So there's two main pieces. There's the overall dispatch consolidation. Um, and so active, so basically having where citizens are calling, uh, the centralized dispatch will be uh, answering and handling those calls for service, generating the call for service and dispatching that out. So there's that piece. And then there's one piece for Axon Records, which is the integration of CAD, which is computer-aided dispatch. So there's the integration of that CAD and Axon Records. So this way, when your officers are pulling case numbers in the CAD, it's transitioning and bringing some of that information over, telling them, hey, you have this report to write, some basic information. So um, the county uh, last week had asked us, the biggest uh, hurdle that we are now trying to, to get over is that what does that integration between the CAD and Axon Records look like? Um, and, and there's a bunch of different ways to build integrations and we're striving to make sure that we have the best, reliable, most stable integration. So that, uh, that resides on a building a replication server. Um, and the county was not, um, they, they didn't have the staff, the database analysts and stuff like that to do that. So the sheriff's office does and we are helping them through that process over the next couple of weeks so we can get that and remove that um, as a, as a to-do and as a pending item. Aside from that, the last piece is gonna be us helping um, the city with the laptop uh, builds uh, for to install all the public safety software that the officers are gonna need. Uh, and then we can schedule training. And so the sheriff's office is gonna uh, help provide the training uh, for the MCT, which mo stands for Mobile Communications Terminal. That's the box in the car that receives all the stuff from CAD. Uh, and uh, we will help provide the officers uh, training in that piece. Uh, so we'll train uh, the, uh, the agency and train the trainers. And then the county uh, will provide the training uh, on CAD for the employees that will be helping out um, uh, on in the dispatch front. So um, uh, as, a law, as law enforcement, the, the boots on the ground, uh, they're, they, they utilize the MCT more so than CAD. CAD's where you write up the call for service, send it out. Uh, and the MCT is the officer of response. So we divided and divvied up those responsibilities between the county and dispatch. So we get the best people training on those tasks and we'll be training uh, on MCT, uh, which uh, you know, will be as soon as we get those, um, the software installed, we'll be able to help facilitate that. So it's been a, 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 an amazing uh, journey for, <laughs> to say the least. Um, we are definitely excited to have Zephyr Hills coming on board, right? And so that's the that's one of the benefits. State City's been uh, on with us for a few years now. Port Ritchie um, has been on the same uh, CAD and MCT, not necessarily the same dispatch. We are trying to get them on, but since your guys' leadership in 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 joining Dade City in this uh, venture, we have got the commitments from Newport Ritchie. They will be consolidating as well. Uh, and we are very close to getting, uh, uh, finishing up the, the, um, the, new, uh, the contract for Port Ritchie. So this will be probably the very first time uh, since pen and paper that uh, all law enforcement agencies have been on the same system in this county. So it's very exciting time. Uh, we will also be putting forth some effort to make sure that we combine the databases from all agencies into a search mm. uh, engine where all of the officers, can, we can share the same information in the county. So we know that the criminals know no boundaries in our county, uh, and it's about time that our law enforcement uh, does the same, right? So um, it's exciting. We're, we're happy. Uh, like I said, the chief and his team have been fantastic uh, partners to work with, um, and hopefully uh, we'll... Uh, we'll get to see all the benefits out of it. So really appreciate it. And if there's any questions about anything, I'm happy to, to answer them. Uh, Councilman Proctor. Well, I just have a comment. I'm, we have been working on this for a long time and I'm very excited. I think it's gonna benefit the citizens. I think reaction time to calls, you'll have more information now that where you guys are sharing the information, I think that's a big blessing. So you'll know, I'm just really excited about it. And I think it's gonna benefit the citizens. Yeah, a couple of things that we've seen to that point, um, you know, even from Dade City, right, because they are uh, on the same dispatch. So we hear their calls and we, um, we can see their units and their calls. And so oftentimes we have their officers backing up our deputies uh, on calls that are right around the city limits 
or our officers are going into the city limit, our deputies are backing up their right. officers. And that's the other thing, the safety to the other officers, you, you all working together and that's great because if, if you need backup or if they need backup, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's a force multiplier for sure. And, and the one thing, you know, I want to point out, because I, I know, you know, I've heard, and I'm sure you guys are probably uh, hearing rumors that this is the first step of, you know, the sheriff's office wants to take over the police department. And that couldn't be any further from the truth. And that's why I want to make sure, um, you know, from, from the sheriff's uh, words to my ears, like that is, that is not our intent, right? And we've seen that and proven that. We can point to the success that we've seen in Dade City. It is not our intent uh, to try to take over. We want to work with the cities uh, and, and build that cohesive relationship. And this is a, a strong relationship that we've been building as well throughout that process. And we're looking forward to seeing that continue to grow uh, amongst the teams out there. I have a question, kind of technical, which is scary because I don't really understand that. <clears throat> you mentioned the, the, the program you're using is Action or Act On? Axon. Axon. Yes. But what does Central Square have to do with it, or is that a previous nope. one you did? Good question. So uh, we actually, we're going to have two vendors now. So uh, up until, uh, well now, really, we've had, we were at, with Central Square. Their product was called One Solution. Uh, absolute, uh, uh, probably misnomer, I guess, on that, right? Good, good marketing there. But so it was one solution. So we add them for CAD, for RMS, uh, for the records management system. And then we, all, we also had them for employee, uh, their uh, public administration, which was like human resources and finance and all of that stuff. Uh, so our agency, we after the search for platforms out there for everything, um, we've decided we're moving uh, to Oracle away for the, from the for the public admin aspect. So we're leaving one solution, Central Square, for that. And for RMS, we have transitioned to Axon, which is the the organization, and theirs is just called Axon Records. So we will stay with uh, Central Square One Solution CAD. So you will see uh, we are still um, a customer of Central Squares for the CAD piece, as I had mentioned it. They really, they have a solid CAD. There's a lot of awesome features and functionality in there. And, and from a smaller jurisdictional perspective, you guys will probably be able to even utilize a lot of those things far better than, than the sheriff's office will from, from a larger uh, organization because some things are harder to manage on a grander scale uh, than, than you have on a smaller scale. So there's a lot of things that we'll be able to show uh, that um, e even though your, the agency is consolidating from a macro perspective. It still separates out different tenants and features that you can manage as system administrators. And we're able to help provide that training and show what you can customize in and of your agency. It's not just you have to have what the sheriff's office has. Um, and that's what a lot of the work that the county has been doing, the chief and his team's been working on is providing them is what are those little unique things and your zones and, and responses and things like that that you can build out and customize unique to your organization. So, um, so the Central Square CAD, to long answer long and I apologize, but so we're staying with Central uh, Square CAD uh, and we're moving to Axon RMS. Councilman Wilson. Thank you. So first of all, I just want to say that, um, you know, when we first started talking about this, I think there was some concern that there was going to be a loss of jobs in our dispatch. And I think that the chief has done a great job of really kind of integrating that opportunity, making sure that those folks knew that they would have a place with you. The other thing is that I just want to make a comment, and that is that I don't think I've ever seen the relationship between our sheriff and our police department better I mean I'm so proud of the way that that the, you know the way that you folks are working together and the improvement in communication but the bottom line is that this this is going to save lives it's going to save time and it really is the right decision I think for our community thank yes. you yeah thank you and that's it's it's due to his leadership there yes uh, it's, he's been fantastic Councilman Burgess and, and I just want to echo what everyone else has already said and um you know it's been a pretty long process since we got into it in earnest, but we've actually discussed it for many years. And I think it's going to improve efficiency, of course, but the biggest takeaway is going to be the safety to the public and the safety to our officers. Yeah. And I think that's the, the, the big factor in all this that I really appreciate. So, and thank you for coming in, filling us in on it. Mary, you want to say anything on it? Or? 
I just wanted to thank you for hitting that um, head on that you're not here to take over our police department. And I know that. I knew that personally. So thank you for hitting that and, yes. and reassuring our public of that. Yes, so absolutely. We, we love our police department. Yes. <laughs> okay, Number so one. we you public know safety. we love our yeah. police department. Okay. Mm -hmm. And great job, guys. Great job working together. I know it's been a long process, and I know the thing, everything's good when it's going good, but when you have issues, that's when you find out how the relationship is. So to be on this for as long as you have, great job. And there's going to be rough times as we integrate, but I know with the working relationship we have, we're going to work through it. So, um, And we're all supportive of it. I think it's safe. It's, it's the thing we needed to do way back, so I'm glad we're doing it now. So. Yeah, thank you, Chief. And do you need any action from us, or that was just an update? Just inform information for you. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for taking your time to come over. No, thank you. Thanks thank you. for having me. Appreciate it. Very good. Very informative. All right, Mary, you got a couple more, right? Yeah. So, CJ, OJ, Eric, and John, come on up. So our city has received Plant Operations Excellent Awards from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. It says 2023 Plant Operations Excellent Award in furtherance of the Florida Department of, of Environmental Protection's goal for ins of ensuring safe wastewater for all people in Florida. This certificate is to award is is hereby awarded to the city of zephyr hills wastewater treatment plant in recognition of the outstanding operation through dedicated professionalism the award of the will be given in haines city so it's presented this 12th day of march 2024 we have one for the for the wastewater and then we have almost the exact thing but for safe drinking water. So we're very excited and very proud of you and proud of your, your guys and all the hard work that you do. So. CJ, CJ, right, where are you? I hate that thing. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, get your picture. Mm -hmm. Congrats, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job, gentlemen. And if you don't mind, these, um, operations or treatment plant operators award not operators but the plants themselves awards are due to the dedication of the people that we have working for the city and one thing I want to point out this award was over for the past um, past year <clears throat> and for the wastewater treatment facility to get this award it's I'm telling you it's something that it was not expected because we are down for positions in at the treatment plant itself we have three people that staff at the treatment plant. We're supposed to have seven. So this is done by, in OJ's direction also, to make sure our wastewater is safe for the environment and for public health. So that's one thing I just wanted to point out. And we all know how CJ runs his department with water. It's great. Uh, just reiterate, the Florida does have the best taste in drinking water through the Florida a Section AWWA. And we're going in June to Anaheim, California, for the contest for the United States. So just Great. reminding that these folks do what they're supposed to be doing. That's yes. water, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Congratulations. I know you do a, a lot of extra, and I, I know we all appreciate the effort you put into it. Thank you. Yes, thanks, guys. Thanks. And, I, and I know this is just a piece of the team, too. There's people underneath you, and thank you for all you do. You can tell if the water's ever not flowing, that's when we know, that's, that's when you hear about it. But we don't ever hear about it, hardly ever. So thank you so much for what you do. 
Hey, and John and OJ got to work on their beards a little bit, too. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> you guys got to work on your beards. <laughs> you and OJ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have one more item, Mayor, right? All right. Um, we have uh, Dr. Stovall and Vicki. They're going to talk about ZEDC work plan. So, good evening. Thank you for having us. Uh, the last time I was up here, I think I was talking about ZEDC and getting another extension of our contract. Thank you for that. And uh, I know that was, um, it, it is a 12 month operation and we kind of end e each operational year with the economic summit in this room. And so we did that and it went well. Um, and so we really kind of have a year to date and as, get, as our preparation to get ready for the contract renewal, we, we understood that probably we need to do these updates more than once a year or so that's really why I'm here tonight uh, I will tell you and I know because we were together that um, you know one of the things that we do is we uh, help with uh, Tallahassee things and uh, I, I know that we had a good a good trip there we uh, were joined by our um, our colleague uh, Kendall DeFord this time, and that was the first trip for him, and he had a good time and I think contributed to the whole thing being successful. We had the first ever Pigs and Sea Hills downtown, um, and you know that's not exactly a ZEDC thing, but it certainly is an economic driver thing, and that's why we decided to put it on this list tonight, and um, uh, after action reports and getting talking with all the people, the vendors, and people to help make it go. Uh, everything I've heard is it was a great thing to bring it downtown, so we're glad we did it. And, you know, like every time you do something, you learn things, and it'll be better next year. So that's good. Um, we had a wonderful trade show um, Saturday before last down off of 54 and Allen Road, and about 20 companies who do business here came uh, to the parking lot, put a tent, and brought their best smiles and their business cards, and they, they had a had a day of getting to know people and people getting to know them. And uh, I spent a little time there myself, and uh, I was very impressed. And so I think that's a good model for helping support businesses in town. And um, the other thing that's good about that is typically when we do events and when Main Street does events, they're not anywhere except downtown. And so this was a way to put some uh, sort of some sunshine on that part of town and help help the businesses there and I think that was a great success and as you as you may recall we are um, as far as a kind of research piece that we're wanting to do for this current year we're thinking what is the best way to help stimulate people getting a job here and so we're hoping that experience at the trade show will be something we can kind of build on to help with that idea as well um, we um, have our, our every other month stakeholders meeting, which is really our citizen advisory group. And it is a broad, a broad group of people. And we've been meeting here in this room. So thank you for that. Um, we had, uh, I think, uh, introduced some things that I think most people were not aware of. I don't, don't know how many people know we actually are a town that supports a mushroom farm, but we are and sell these mushrooms out of Zephyr Hills. Other people eat our mushrooms. And so that's a, that's a really cool thing it, that people wouldn't have known. Um, we had the new owner of Skydive City, and I know he's been in front of you. He's a very dynamic guy, and uh, I think he's going to be a great asset to the community. And then Vicki sent out a, an, a, an invitation today, I believe. Our next stakeholders meeting, week after next, is... Uh, going to feature transportation because we you know that comes up over and over and over and i know you understand how it works but i don't think everybody on our advisory group knows how it works so uh vicky has invited um mpo staff um scott ferry is going to come and scott is a very knowledgeable very good presenter and he's going to spend some time kind of walking through how the transportation thing works because we all know we can be really great in the city but we're surrounded by the county. And so we, we need to have that uh, information and that connection so we can get things done. So that's coming up, and certainly you're all invited to come to that if you wish. Um, I don't know what it 
I don't know what you have to do for Sunshine Law, but it, you, you can come as far as we're concerned. So we hope, <laughs> hope you will be there. We're no, we don't vote on anything, so it should be fine. Um, then we have our normal array of things that we don't think about much because we just have them in the background. You know, we have our website, the marketing website that, that they have to do updates from time to time, clearly Zephyr Hills, and, and then the various publications. And those are on the website. Occasionally somebody wants one, and so they'll print them off in staff on demand if somebody wants one. So that's what we're up to. Um, we had, um, when we don't do stakeholders, the other months we do what we call our steering committee, which is more of a staff level thing. And we have really great discussions there. And we're usually joined by uh, uh, Tom Ryan from PEDC. And, you know, he, he does that out of the county marketing for us and for the whole county. And he provides a lot of insight. So we, we have very good discussions there. Hopefully we'll continue. Happy to answer questions, and if I don't know it, Vicki is here, she might know it, so. Questions? Councilman Spinnin. Sure. I just thank you, Dr. Stovall, for coming forward. I, I appreciate you making the effort to, to keep us informed and, and bring things forward, so thank you. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Stovall, thank you again for your service to uh, the ZEDC and to our chamber. Um, you know, one of the things we were talking about in the uh, CRA meeting earlier was to be sure that site selectors know about the grants that are available for our downtown district, particularly for, you know, restaurants and other, and other potential users mm -hmm. of these commercial grants. So, you know, we want to make sure that when Mr. Mr. Ryan meets someone that might be a good fit for us, that we, we can help. That we're talking to them. Thank Absolutely. You. Mm -hmm. and, and I know he helps us with that, he, and, and he works with Billy quite, quite well. All right. Anything else? If not, all right, guys. Randy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the next item on the agenda are the consent items. And there are, let's see, four of them. Mr. President, I move to approve our consent items numbers 2.1 through 2.4. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve all four consent items. Is there any that we're going to approve? All right. Well, that's, I thought that there was one. No, that, that, that's fine. I, I'm gonna, I'll get with you on one of them, but that's, it's fine. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Um, next is a planning director's report. Hunter, you're up, bud. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, Hunter Gearhart, a historic preservation planner for City of Zephyr Hills. So I'm here um, to, thank you, Lori, um, to pass through the historic grant uh, facade funding for Manolo's Italiano over on Fifth Avenue. Um, as you can see from the before and after pictures here, it's a little smaller up there, but uh, this is what it looks like now. That's the view from Fifth Ave. And then um, this is the new door compared to the old one. Uh, the improvements here went for a lot of the trim and paint on the windows as well as redoing the entire door. That was a uh, max grant of $2,500. Um, it's been done in the uh, historically accurate way, um, so it matches the other side. Um, then staff recommends approval of the distribution of funding there. All right, and 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 this is a a grant, a matching a grant that's a reimbursed grant because the money's already been spent, correct? Right. Okay, yes. and, and improvements been made. Any questions? I have a question, sure. probably of Joe. Uh, are there plans to open soon? Uh, uh, are you reopening? Come to the microphone. Yeah, Come, yeah that would be great, Joe. Just give us an yeah, update. Yeah, we'd like on, to hear an update. That would be great. Just your name and address for the Ladies record. Gentlemen, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you all again here, and it's a pleasure being here amongst you all. Um, well, my name is Joe Abed, um, proprietor of Manolo's Italian Restaurant, the building and the business. Uh, most of you know me. I've only been here 25 years. Um, so uh, uh, COVID hit. Everybody went through a depression. Everybody, you know, went through the whole process. 
um, I had a little water leak that turned, that looked like a disaster, but it wasn't. Um, I had just repaired the ceiling on the right side where I started. Just repaired it, not even four or five months, so we had to redo that. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, the building is much better looking than it was. All those repairs were needed. The city twisted my arm a little bit, but it needed to be done, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the building department and, and everybody. They've been very wonderful with me, to be honest with you. Um, so we brought it up to good looks. We had a few people interested. It don't look like the good Lord wants me to sell. It's just the way it is. Uh, we've had so many people. We came close, but it didn't work. So now uh, the place has been uh, closed for a while, and I have the the urge to cook again, so the energy is back. So we're going to reopen. As of now, I'm done with all my inspections with the city. Everything is passed. Everything has been done. I just got approved with the state of Florida for the floor plans because the building was closed for more than 18 months. I had to submit new floor plans. They got approved. We are just waiting on an inspection upon my call. I have a few more things to do, but you guys, since you're not in a restaurant business, things take much longer. When you're not in a business, you don't understand. For example, menus are not that easy as you think, and programming of computers. And from A to Z, it's a long process. So I'm hoping and I'm looking forward. I don't want to exaggerate, but maybe a month, two months at the most, the doors should be operational. Joe, we're, yeah. we're missing our white table restaurant. Restaurant, We are, Appreciate for, especially I, I for my clients, yeah. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Uh, it took a little bit, but some people mm -hmm. go on journeys in life that are not easy to understand for others. So this, is, this was the situation, but I'm in a much better spirit. And uh, to be quite honest with you, what lifted my spirit is all this growth. So if there was a restaurant, Steve, that should have been open, now would have been the time <laughs> yes. to open. <laughs> But anyways, it's been a blessing, and I've, I've, met, I've had a wonderful time. Good. I appreciate Good. Zephyr Hills is what I'm saying. Thank well, you. We're looking forward to you, to you being back open so we can come over there and eat. So. We're looking forward to the Lattice. linguine. <laughs> Very Good. Can we put our order in now? <laughs> we'll keep. Are you taking orders? <laughs> um, we can. <laughs> I'll call you. I cook at home. <laughs> That's right. Well, Joe, thank you. And, uh, any, anything else? Any questions for Hunter? I know he's eager to answer some questions. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he looks like. <laughs> second. I have a motion and a second for approval of this item. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good job, Hunter. Thank you guys. Oh, I figured I would just take this time really quick to um, update you on a couple other things. Sure. We have a new historic survey that's uh, in the works. We're looking at expanding the historic district, hopefully, opening up that. Uh, that historic facade funding to more homes, more people, um, as well as filling out the remaining seats on the Historic Preservation Board. So those are a couple things coming down the pipeline. Great. Well, thank I, have a, I have a question for you there, sure. too. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to start working on doing something with the depot as well, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, we are. Correct. Good, good answer, thank Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anything and else? And the Barracks Museum, too. Yeah. Well, Hunter, great job. Seriously, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, city Manager's Report. Yes, sir, uh, item 4.1. Uh, the Florida National Guard received a state appropriation to construct an armory in Zephyr Hills. We all know that. Uh, at the, um, They chose the site at 6th Avenue and South Avenue. Um, north of that intersection, they purchased 25 acres. Unfortunately, that piece of property does not have paved access uh, to 6th Avenue. It does, but it's through the neighborhood. Um, and so um, for the city to facilitate that development, um, we requested a state appropriation, which was granted in the 2023 budget. Uh, the, the project is currently under design. Um, and once we own the property, it can then go out to bid. And the bid or the design and is, holy cow, the design is for the construction of an access road from South Avenue or Sixth Avenue north, about 1,300 feet. It'll include a water and sewer line to provide access not only to the armory, but then also the possibility of, of opening up um, additional uh, industrial lands 
uh, owned by other individuals. Uh, based on city policy, the city can pay a maximum of 10% above the appraised value. The appraisals came in at 450 and five, just over 501,000. Uh, therefore, the purchase price of 400,000 is well within the city's purchasing policies. The purchase of the property is covered in the appropriation. Um, just as a side note, uh, the facility, the, the guard facility, is estimated to begin construction uh, in January of 2025, and it should take about 18 months. Um, with that, staff, rec staff recommends approval of the purchase of 4.8 acres uh, from Zephyr Rail Industrial Park uh, for a total cost of $400,000. Any questions? And we're okay. buying that so that we can continue on with that project? Correct, yeah, so we have to own the property before, so because it's a state appropriation, DOT has told us that we have to own the property before we can move forward with the bid documents. So the road has been designed uh, and we're just waiting on the clear letter and we'll get that clear letter once the city owns the property. Thanks. And then this, is, this isn't city funding, it's we're being reimbursed for that 400 correct it's state appropriation we have to expend the funds and then we submit it to dot and it gets reimbursed so it is not coming out of the city's um pocket so to speak yeah thank you hmm? anything else and really like you said it opens up that corridor for other potential development so and we it was great to get the, the appropriation to do so so okay um, the city man i mean the city man the city attorney's looked at this and everything's good, right? Right, yes sir, yep, he was the one who uh, drew up, or right. his office drew up the Thanks. sales agreement. I move for approval of business item 4.1. I have a motion and a second for approval of business item 4.1. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously, thank you. Um, city attorney's report, Bill, are you gonna fill in? Um, sure. Or yes. I can. I can read it. Doesn't I think. Matter. I think planning department's going to fill in come for on. me. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can give you a really condensed version. I guess we. Do you want my version? Or you want Todd's version? No, we, we want Todd's version. Okay. All right. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, yeah. That part I can do. Uh, ordinance number. 1474-24, an ordinance of the City of Zephyr Hills, Florida, amending the City of Zephyr Hills Code of Ordinances, Section 150.01, and amending Table 1 of Section 7.003.01, Section 1, amending the existing de minimis and traffic impact analysis, traffic study requirements, and Section 10, amending the transportation mitigation turn lane criteria, and roadway and intersection improvements criteria providing for repeal or codification and an effective date. Thank you. Well, with all the growth and development, staff is trying to be very proactive. We listen to the concerns that council and the mayor have had and, you know, trying to do what we can do. And two of those steps we're taking with the first reading of the ordinance tonight, and that, that is amending our traffic study requirements, our turn lane requirements, and, and cr the creation of a hot spots map. There's a number of other minor technical amendments we're putting into the traffic study requirements as well. And if you recall back a couple meetings ago, we had Kim Lee Horn, uh, a couple of our representatives there, traffic engineers that work with staff to create the, the, the modifications that are before you tonight. And I mean, we could bring up the, the, the hotspots map. I, is, is that on the, um, here, here's the hotspots map and of course, as you know, what we presented before at the plan report, we've identified uh, hotspot uh, locations and zones, and uh, the, the dots represent hotspot locations, and then we also created a hotspot zone, and that's the area highlighted in blue at the very top. And the reason I wanted to do that was, is we're gonna task Kimley Horn to look at that entire area, bordering from Purdy Pond, uh, on the south, Cossack Road on the north, 301 on the, the west, and uh, Wire Road uh, on the, the east. Uh, we're we're going to have them look at that entire area, even inside the, the shopping center, as Zephyr comments. What can we do to maximize the efficiency, safety uh, of that entire zone? And uh, ju just so you know, the, the areas in green, um, the, those were hot spots that were uh, brought up, they probably weren't as significantly uh, prioritized, but those were areas, 
a number of them are, are state roadways, but they are important enough that we wanted to, to include them on the hotspots map. I think Councilman Wilk Wilkerson brought up the, the Fifth Avenue and Court Street, which I yeah, wholeheartedly agree that we need some churn lanes there. And we, just because that's an area in green, we're, we're gonna talk with uh, Pasco County and the state to see about opportunities to, to, to work on that intersection. Uh, there is some good news I, I heard as of Friday uh, coming, we feel, from Pasco County on Geiger Road. Once we get the full details on that, I'll, I'll share that with, with the, the entire group. But uh, we didn't have our Kimley Horn folks attend tonight. I suggested they didn't need to make the trip, but if there are comments or issues um, that we can't answer, they can certainly come back for the adoption public hearing. Really, the, the traffic study, we're making a couple minor tweaks. You either do a TIS, that's a traffic impact study for less than 100 peak hour trips for new developments. And then if you're above that, you do a, a TIA, that's a traffic impact analysis. And that's for the bigger projects, either site plan or rezoning or future land use. And the, the other thing that's incorporated that's very unique, I'm not sure of any other place that has this, but if on the TIS, TIAs, the larger projects, if you're within a mile of one of these hotspot areas or zones, then that provides us the opportunity to look at opportunities to make improvements within those hotspots and hotspot zones. And we're not specifying what that would be because every one of those could be a little bit different, but and the only thing you don't see in the ordinance is um, there, there's a, a table. You probably remember it from the presentation made by the consultants uh, where we're really reducing the number of uh, peak hour trips for left turn lanes. We, we, I, I talked with the consultants. They told us about uh, Plant City, I think, Tampa, Hillsborough County. They got a much lower standard. That's, that's what we're using. So I think that kind of summarizes what we're doing. I just want to yes. point out uh, um, that we have funding in the budget for these hotspots too. Yes, and, and kind of what the step is that, of course, Kimley Horn's eager to get to work for us. But I said, well, we're fine. We wanted to finalize the hotspots map, get the ordinance approved. The next step would be is Bill and I will meet and we'll talk about priorities, probably where we want to start. You know, I think we do need to look at Pretty Pond. I think that's designed for a dual left turn southbound lane. We're, we know we're going to need that with the additional multifamily coming, but certainly we can look at others as well. I think we're looking at Geiger Road, of course, but yeah, that would be the next step is coming up a task work order on those projects we want to get started with. Councilman Burgess. And Todd, in, in looking at this previously, there, there was some language in there about... Um, basically us being able to look at these analysis and these studies from a safety aspect and efficiency and you kind of brought up a little bit so like if it's within one mile we can is that language still in there where we can kind of like you know when, yes. those, when those when those analysis come back they're going to they're going to say something most likely different than what we're going to anticipate yeah so um as long as that language is still in there will we have the ability to look at things and and make adjustments i guess if you want to call it from there Yes, we have that language in there about for, again, the TIAs, the, that's 100 gross PM peak hour trips, traffic study, uh, the TIA require uh, trip generation, turn lane analysis, and hotspot locations and zones analysis. So staff will be working with our consultants when a project falls within that category to, to look at opportunities. And that, that's why it's good to get started on some of the, the next steps on it could be anything from maybe you want a bus stop there, maybe you want uh, better lighting, you, it could be turn lanes, roundabout, you know, a lot of different uh, scenarios for improvements based on each hotspot location. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I'm, I'm glad we're being proactive about this because, you know, these, most of these roads are not, they're not city roads, and so they're, we... Right. And, and I have to tell you that I've been out, um, you know, I've been communicating with our residents. I've been communicating 
with our uh, state representatives and our county representatives and um, elected officials, and they are more than willing to help us find the funding for these for these projects to help our residents because it's a win for everyone if we can get these issues resolved. And you know, one of the things that I explain to folks is that you know, developers want to come into the city; they want to bring their development into the city because of the um, accessibility to our trained planning staff and the um, and the you know, compression of time that they save money doing that. But it also improves our opportunity to negotiate these additional requirements. Like uh, Councilman Burgess mentioned, mentioned that, you know, it doesn't matter that it's not right next to your, to your property. It's, it may be a quarter mile or a half mile away. We still have to resolve the issues that are holistic. The approach has to be more holistic. Exactly. So, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. And I just want to make sure that we're, um, or ensure that we're, proactive in this and I and I'm curious to how we initiate a hot spot construction project well I think we start with uh, identifying what the improvement is and we work Finding with it. Kimley Horn we'll do a task work order for each particular hot spot location and then we'll get together and review and assess what those improvements are going to be and then we'll have a record of that and then I my opinion it would be as we have a development come in that's within a mile of that and, and I think it, it it'll vary there'll probably be negotiations depending on what that improvement is and uh, what type of project it is and I, I don't we're not nailing ourselves down here with any specific details but we'll have the ability to negotiate that but if it's a, <clears throat> a hot an existing problem but it's not tied to a new development can we initiate it our internally? Oh, yeah, I understand your. If, if I understand your question, yes. If we know there's an issue, we can say as we're going through the next, next budget cycle, budget X amount of dollars to add a turning lane at you know Court yeah, Street. Exactly. You know, um, so we can do that any time. Yes. The the other thing we need to do is also identify potential other sources of funding for these because yeah. the county has many pots of money the state has a lot of pots of money for different different things I mean they're all separate and we understand that there's some for uh, intermodal transportation there's some for strategic that CIS money is out there and you know we need to try and make sure uh, and the MPO staff works on that a lot so we'll make sure we get these to them so they can identify funding sources as well because look we bear the brunt of it, but we don't, we're not necessarily all the cause of it. Right. A lot of the surrounding areas are. But I am glad we're being proactive um, in doing this. Um, so we need to definitely share it with the county and, and let them know that what we're doing. And we budgeted a million dollars for it. We did. Yes. So, <clears throat> that got last a, year's, right? so we have a good start, and that's in this current budget. Yeah. And maybe, like you're saying, that can be used in and partnered with another, sure. whether it's the county or the state team, make more of that. Well, and I know a lot of times if we have the project somewhat ready to go, that yeah. that helps. So ready. That helps. But it is, these are, I mean, these are large dollar items we're talking about. You know, it's it's nothing for one of these intersections to be five million bucks. You know, really time time you do it all with the retention. Everything it's it's it is. I mean, these are big numbers, so we need some help with it. Mm -hmm. and, and just to Councilman Spina's, um point, we did budget a million dollars this year. <clears throat> Depending on timing and design and all that, I don't know that that. I know we can't spend a million. I don't know that we can spend any of that. And so those dollars can be carried forward um, to to the next year's budget um, and make sure that it's still in there. For something like Pretty Pond, we could start the design process design, now. Yeah. Design. Since so, we know so, we're, we're doing that. I'm sorry. So Pretty Pond Wire Road is currently under design. Well, for uh, the left turn. Oh, the left turn right. line. I'm sorry. I'm talking right. about Pretty Pond and 301. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. So we could start that design now since we know we want to do that. I don't know how you initiate it. Yeah, we've talked but that's about what that. I'm, uh, I mean, what I want to make sure is that we're talking about these and planning for them, but we need to initiate them and get mm -hmm. them off from the table to somewhere <laughs> and, and move ahead. Right, and the other thing I failed to mention, not only the partner, the big partner is gonna be a developer coming in that want, you know, that's, that's kind of, uh, when, when you look at the, the different traffic studies that they're, they're contributing to 
the improvement in the uh, that we're looking at. Yep. All right. Um, any anything else? Yeah, I just I like the idea that um, you're going to make it a lot easier to have them put turn lanes in. That's basically the biggest part of this. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Correct. All right. Um, and the staff and the Planning Commission recommended approval of this item. So. I move we approve the first reading of ordinance number 1474-24. I'll second. I have a motion and a second for approval of this item. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. If, Thank you. If I may, uh, we have two of our young planners. Uh, I want to brag on them a little bit. They're about finishing up their probationary period. And... Uh, we're excited to bring them on off the probation. I think they're both doing an amazing job. You heard from Hunter tonight and Tommy Lee. They're both just doing great jobs uh, for the planning department. Uh, it's great to have some young blood in there. Rodney's been uh, very beneficial in mentoring them both. So uh, we're, we're setting ourselves up to have good planning representation even after I retire in the near future. So just wanted to let you all know how pleased we are with both of them. Oh, good. good. How many is you got left, Todd? Oh, I haven't counted down yet. But yeah, don't, get there. Count down. Yeah. don't let him lie to you. He knows exactly how many minutes he has left. <laughs> how many minutes? Um, and the city manager reminded me of something that it, uh, I should ask for public comment on that item. Is there anybody who wants to speak to that item here tonight? Okay, seeing no one rise, I'm going to go on to the next item, which is a citizen comment. Does anyone has, anybody want to speak to anything, or has anyone signed up to speak to anything tonight? Does anyone care to speak to anything tonight? Sure. We'll give you three minutes. Yes, yes you do. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Joe Abed for Fido Manola's Italian Restaurant. I'm back up here. Um, what I want to talk about, this was interesting here. Um, there are some bad turns, like uh, some uh, making a left turn off a of 301 into Fort King Road. That takes a year. Many times I almost got clipped. A lot of people sees when you're turning, they speed up. They, they like that kind of stuff. Very dangerous, very horrible there. I always came through there. And mm -hmm. God always protected me. Uh, but it's always been very, very tough. Uh, parking. Parking is a huge issue in this whole area that you guys want to bloom and make look so good and very busy for business. Parking is a huge issue. I would calculate the load of what everybody is allowed to have in their business and count and count how many parking lots to see what the issue is and and you guys you know me and steve been talking about this for 20 years about the parking situation it would be awesome if we could do something to add more i know Garage. the city hall parking my Garage. customers are welcome to park there um, and anyone else um, but um, in the evening because no one is here but uh, we're in desperate need of parking in the downtown for sure yeah Good. Well, I agree. And, and thank you for bringing that up. And I know that's something we'll continue to work on, too, um, about, about connections, making a safe connection to and from downtown to the parking areas, too. Another pandemic that we're um, facing, uh, it's not the chickens or the cats here, but rather the bicycle riders that we don't know who they are, what they are, if they're on drugs or not, doesn't matter. It's going on, the same issue on the sidewalks downtown. They're riding bikes, and people are speeding, regardless of the speed limit of 20 miles an hour and all that. Uh -huh. So the downtown needs a little attention when it comes to those kids speeding up. Sidewalks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank well, you all. Well, thank you for letting us know, Joe. All right, anyone else? Seeing no one rise, I'll go on to the mayor announcements. I just have a few little thank yous. Um, I appreciate when I, I sent an email out this week because I came across a really dangerous area that uh, needed to be identified, and it was on a private parking lot, but the city staff, Shane um, and Joel and Ken, or Ken, no, Billy, they just stepped right in real fast and got that fixed for me because that 
I could not sleep when I came across that at 8 o'clock at night the night before. So I appreciated that ability to be able to email, and then they are quick to answer the call. So, so thank you for that. Uh, we, did went, we did go to Woodland Elementary to look at the new plans for the school. West and or West Zephyr Hills Elementary, thank you. <laughs> that would have been bad. Go backwards. West Zephyr Hills Elementary, a lot of us went to school there. So it's kind of exciting to see the new plans for that and watch for that to come. One of the biggest benefits we're going to find is to get First Street to not be a, a parking lot at opening and closing of school. They're going to, it's going to be one of the first things that they do is get that drop off down the street. So, uh, and Rodney set me up with a breakfast with the planners, and we had a great breakfast. We spent two hours. They did work. They worked hard for me at that breakfast, and we, we talked about a lot of things that we want to look at and see, and the depot was one of our conversations that we had. So I appreciated Rodney doing that because we have to build relationships with these people. You know, we have to trust who we, who we work with. And then my last thing was Shane came to COM, and I, Citizen of the Month, and I think he got to see how great it is. And, and I loved his comment of um, the good feeling and to see the aspirations of these youth that we have in our city. We had a neurosurgeon that wants to be a neurosurgeon. Oh. Uh, we had many doctors. They wanted to be, huh? Pediatricians. Pediatricians. Yeah. So it was really good to have his eyes open to that. And I, I invite you to come to Citizen of the Month on the third Wednesday at... 8 a.m., Chick-fil-A. So any time that you can come, I would love to have you come. So thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, city Manager announcements. Uh, just one. Uh, the good news is, you know, we went to Tallahassee this year. Um, so in the state budget currently, pending the governor's veto, uh, there is funding for uh, Zephyr Park in the amount of a million dollars and for the Tucker Road infrastructure improvements. I believe that one was a million and a half dollars. Uh, so those are currently in the budget. Fingers crossed, prayers that governor does not veto. So that's all I have for this all evening. Right. Thank you. That is good news. All right. Uh, city attorney's not here, so he probably doesn't have anything to say. He has nothing um, to say. City council comments. Let's talk down here with Dr. Spina. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a couple things. First, I would just like to uh, thank Todd for in introducing his young planners. Um, I had the opportunity to go on a tour of the city with them, just show them different sites, and uh, I enjoyed it very much and enjoyed getting to meet them. Uh, we also went to the depots. Other two things. Again. Um, the moratorium we have in place right now will expire in three months, so I think we need to start thinking about how we're going to handle that. Um, I know that we're expecting, I, I talked with the city manager today, and I know we're expecting a response from Swift Mud next month, but I still think uh, we're not out of the woods in terms of water supply, and I think even if we get the permit limit that we hope to get, um, that we need to probably renew the moratorium for a little while so that we can continue to look at options uh, for additional use uh, for additional uh, projects if, if they come. Uh, the second thing I'd like to talk about is we're halfway through the city budget and we budgeted $300,000 for improvements to parks. And I would like to see the, I talked to the city manager about this also, I'd like to see uh, plans come before us and start moving on a pavilion, construction of a pavilion at Cruisin' Field. Uh, now that the uh, concession stand has been torn down and removed, um, the one request I've been getting from there, from the ZPOW uh, players and operators, is that they have a pavilion similar to what's at um, the skate park and at other parks. So I'd like to ask staff to um, start moving on that so that we don't run out of 
the year, it goes quickly, and we start seeing some plans and bids and requests for to get that moving. Um, so I'd like council to endorse that project and I'd like to ask staff to get moving on it. And that's what I have. Okay. Thank you. And that's something we'll, we'll you hope to bring up at a future meeting in the near, very near future, right? As far as the cruising, or do you want to staff? Oh, I think <clears throat> the staff will So I think as a, as a staff, we've, you know, we are in the process of the um, parks master plan. Um, we did, uh, council, councilman and, and I had a conversation today. Uh, we reached out to the consultant. Um, they can look at the location, um, you know, and it's something that, that I had voice is making sure we get it in the right spot so that as we move through this process, we don't have it in the wrong spot and we have to move right. it or make do. So um, the consultant, the, sult the consultant uh, is able to give us location, kind of work with us, uh, get that done. Uh, we have, I received a quote, a little dated, um, from when we did the skate park. Um, so we, we, you know, we have kind of a ballpark of, of what the cost will be. Uh, so that's something that I think we can move forward on and we can get that done. And I think, I think you bring up a good point because uh, we're doing a master plan. And if you think about the time, length of the time it might take to actually, actually implement them, we, we, we do need to do some smaller projects soon, very right. soon. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, my feeling is that we're doing the master plan. We don't want to upset the apple cart, but I think we have the vision to locate different things in different parks on our own. I sure. think we can do things on our own. A pavilion's not a huge uh, change to the park. And, um, and I think we need to look at the master plan, but we also need to listen to what citizens are asking us for and telling us. So I'm just afraid, you know, half the year's gone that I don't want to see us in August not have anything accomplished. So I'd like to get a move on it. Thank you. Councilman Proctor. Well, first of all, uh, Councilman Spina, I am glad you brought up the fact about the moratorium. I definitely believe we are going to have to take another look at it and very soon. Um, and also, I am I'm very proud of our police department for all that they've done this year for them, for us to get consolidated now. That's going to, with the dispatch, it's going to make our citizens a lot safer. It's going to make your job a lot better and easier, and it's going to protect our officers. So I think that's a really important thing, and it's something we've been working on a long time. So I'm just glad to see that come to pass, and that's all I have. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Hank. Hi. Can I interject sure. real quick just because the moratorium was brought up twice? Um, just quick update. City re responded to the um, Swift Mud's RAI. Uh, that was, I think, a week ago. Um, so Swift Mud has, I believe, it's 30 days to respond-ish. Um, so we're hoping that we get our temporary permit um, so that it goes before the, the committee. If not, if we get um, more questions, we'll respond to those and, and resubmit. Uh, so that's where we are on that. Uh, the transportation impact fees, the park impact fees, and the public safety impact fees, that study was completed. Um, and so Kimley Horn and Clancy, I don't remember who he's with, uh, subconsultant of Kimley Horn uh, who completed the study. Um, so we will have ordinances. They will be writing up ordinances for us for transportation, public safety, and park uh, impact fees that will be brought before council. So that hopefully will be before you by the end of April uh, for our first readings, uh, review and first reading of those ordinances. All right. Thank you. Councilwoman Wilkson. Well, I was, I was sad to hear that at the, um, the chamber member of the year for the, for the children that nobody wanted to be a wastewater or utility worker for their future career, but we definitely need them and we want them. So we've got to find a way to attract people to these great jobs that we offer for folks at, at our city. We have to be competitive. You know, we, we had a tremendous um, number of raises last year to really help our staff, um, you know, catch up with this inflation, but that's part of the challenge is that we really need to make these jobs attractive. The next thing on my list was also um, thank you, Dr. Spinner, for the Train Depot Museum, for, because even if we have to get um, Public Works some additional help through short-term contracts or whatever, 
I think there's a, a water intrusion issue there at the depot, and I think that that place needs a little love because it's getting more and more, um, more and more people are learning about the, the wonderful uh, amenity that it is. And I think that, you know, Ms. Hillman is steady leasing that out to prospective customers. So I think we just need to, to give that a little bit more love if we can. Um, then lastly, um, I was um, uh, perusing through uh, Facebook and was uh, once again misquoted or <laughs> there was misinformation floating around out there on the Internet. Um, and and uh, I hope that I can count on Mr. Walters to, to correct uh, this information, but I talked to our city manager regarding a report um, a 2021 report as it related to um, an update on the EPA pump one monitoring at our fire station. Could you give us a little update on what progress has been made on that? I can. So I'll, I'll step back and I'll tell you that myself, HR and uh, utilities director actually spoke today about how do we incentivize people to apply for our wastewater um, treatment plant positions uh, because we are extremely short staffed um, there. So. Um, Sorry, I kicked up my trash can. Um, so we're working on trying to get those positions filled. Um, so you're, um, I'll kind of give you the history of, of where we are or you know, kind of where it started. So April of 2014, um, the water was tested, our, our system was tested uh, for PFOA and PFOS. Uh, those levels uh, were below the advisory levels at that time. Uh, so er everything was always good April of 2014. May of 2016, the EPA lowered the health advisory limit uh, for the PFOA and PFOS uh, to 70 parts per trillion. So in June, the city retested the water. June of 2016, the city retested, uh, sampled the water. One well had levels that were above the new allowable limits. Um, and so the city removed that well from service. July of 2016, additional sam sampling was done and the levels were within the thresholds. So the well was put back into service. August of 2016, it was tested again and the combined total for PFOA and PFOS was 140 parts per trillion, which is above the uh, 70 parts per trillion. So it was removed once again from service uh, April of um, 2018. Uh, the well was officially capped and abandoned per swift mud regulations. Uh, currently, we as the city are required per FDEP to regulate, or FDEP, EPA, to regulate um, kind of a, a, an area. Uh, that was notification that was sent out. That's the, the, um, the NAMS, and that stands for... Something. I can't find it. John printed something for me and it's so small I can't read it. Um, anyhow, it, it, it's a, it, oh, continuous monitoring. Continuous monitoring. Yeah. We have quarterly reports. Part of what was approved this evening um, in the consent agenda, I believe it was for an additional $16,000. Um, excuse me, $70,000 was for to continue continuation of monitoring of the wells. Uh, they're, they're kind of stationed from here towards Zephyr, I say here in the parking lot, fire station, Lake Necessity towards Zephyr Park. Uh, so we're continuing to monitor those uh, wells. Um, and just as recently as a couple weeks ago, uh, we took samples. So we'll wait for those to come back. Uh, but we also continue to monitor the entire system and take samples from the entire system. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, EP, or DEP, EPA are, are consistent, are constantly looking at what those levels are and those levels change. Um, you're, we will see a lot stricter um, regulations coming forward, I think, soon, um, as far as what those levels of PFOA and PFOS are allowed in the system. And so we're monitoring that we're we're preparing for that planning for that um, but as we speak today our water is safe and is within the the allowable limits that DEP and EPA have set and and there's nothing that we're doing on a regular basis that's that's uh, m 
contaminating the water. These are, this is a situation that happened 35 years ago or whatever, and we're just monitoring the conditions Correct. as they come. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and, and I think a, this is my opinion. This is nothing from DP or anybody like that. Um, you know, as, as growth continues, these PFOAs and PFOS uh, are in everything that we use. Uh, the hamburger wrappers that you get from fast food, you know, that doesn't allow the, the grease to seep through. The, um, the special treatment that you put on your car seat so they don't stain when you drop the grease from the hamburger in your lap as you're driving. Uh, the carpets, you know, things. All of that has PFOA and PFOS. So as we develop more and more, you're going to see more intrusion into the ground be because it is a forever chemical. Um, so this is not a, something that's going away, and it's something that's not something that I think is unique to Zephyr Hill. I know it's not unique to Zephyr Hills. Um, so we continue to monitor and um, adapt to what the new rules are as they come about. Mm, you're welcome. Thank you. Councilman Burgess. And I want to thank Steve for bringing up the, uh, the money in, for the parks because, I, and I keep on saying this, I want to use our money to buy stuff. I want to quit spending money to talk about stuff. And um, so thanks for bringing it up, Steve. Design stuff. Yeah. <laughs> or de design stuff that never happens. Um, and the other thing is Joe brought up parking. And I know we've discussed the A Street connection for all of our downtown events, using, utilizing all these buildings here and the parking. And we talked about doing some lighting and stuff. I think we need to probably do that because I've been to a lot of places where I've had to walk to restaurants. And it's coming from here or that parking lot across the street would be a really nice short walk. But as long as it's safe, feels safe. So I think we need to look at, I know we've discussed that, we need to look at maybe the lighting to make that feel safe so that people that are just literally two blocks away, but really a lot of parking in the evenings for, uh, you know, maybe not, maybe not for our events, but for like just general evening things. So, and that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, especially, that, especially that alleyway yeah, mm -hmm. that goes besides the. And, and, and I, I think you're right. I, I think. I think we need to do stuff. You know, I think we get paralyzed by planning these things and letting the consultants run the show. Let's quit that. Let's just go ahead and do it. We could make five mistakes and correct them by the time the planners get finished with their crap. So let's just do it, you know. Just start doing stuff. Um, it, uh, as long as you don't yell at us when we make that mistake. Well, we're going to still yell at you, but hey. <laughs> but at least we'll have... You have a free in-house designer, so just we, ask. <laughs> we, we just, you know, we plan... I, I, we get paralyzed by it sometimes. Um, I'd like to, we have a Swift Mud representative sitting back there hiding. So Amber, we're always glad to have you. Amber Smith from Swift Mud. She's the good one. She's not an enforcement person. She helps us. So she's, she's a good one from Swift Mud. We're always glad to have her. <laughs> um, you, you, uh, Chief, good job uh, working with Pasco County. I mean, I think it probably has improved the relationship already. And it's just going to continue to improve. So great job on that. Um, we talked about a little bit about uh, our, our young planning staff we have. We, that is the future, guys. Us old guys are going out. The new people are coming in. Young people are, are, have energy. We don't have energy like we did, do we, Joe? Sometimes. No, we don't, do we? But, but, but we don't. So we need these young people around us. And honestly... <laughs> When the young people are around you, sometimes you get a little bit of en more energy. You get more juice, you know. So it, it's a good thing. Um, and the other thing we can have, we can have the greatest uh, loader. We can have the greatest garbage truck. We can have the greatest sewer plant in the world. But if we don't have the people to run it, it ain't worth a darn, you know. So we have to have the qualified people and good people to run it. I'm going to keep saying this, too. These young people now want hybrid jobs. We need to look and see what jobs can be, become hybrid. And somebody might say, well, you know, they're at the house, they're not doing anything. How the heck you know if they're doing anything if they're in their office? Sometimes it's because they produce, you know, I, I'm being serious. How do you know they're doing it? It's because they turn out work. So that can be measured. So anyway, that's my soapbox for the night. Flexibility, yeah. 410 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. My girls, my girls all, my daughter just took a hybrid job. She works remotely five days a week, loves it. And that's, you know, that's, that, it's going that way. It's going that way, so we gotta we gotta adapt with the times. If we don't, we're gonna become like the dinosaurs. Okay, uh, meetings adjourned. <laughs> hey, Joe, don't run off. Oh, you can't ride a backloader from home. Though. Hey, next. Oh,